parameters. IPv4 is called INET, and INET6 is IPv6. We've also got ISO, OSI, ISO, OSI, ISO protocol parameters. Now, if you're familiar with IS to IS, the routing protocol, IS to IS is actually the intermediate system to intermediate system routing protocol for the ISO specification, the Open Systems Interconnect IS, ISO specification. Now, you can actually configure ISO on this interface, which is pretty freaking cool, because you could actually run a ISO network here and not even use IP. It's not really practical. You can't really do it in the real world. Most people just use ISO for the routing stuff, uh, and they usually run uh, they usually run IS to IS over IP instead of an o instead of over ISO, but it is there. But instead of let wasting time, let's go into INET and look at that. So I can do set family INET. Now if you do this, set family INET, this is the equivalent of saying IP unnumbered on Cisco. So for instance, IP is turned on, it'll process IP requests on that interface, but there's no IP address assigned to the interface. So this is like no IP address on Cisco. Now from this point, I can actually go into edit again, family INET, and now I don't have to type that again. You see, every time I go deeper a level, my options get more limited under set, and it's a shortcut, right? Now here I've got some options. Look, i got filter, MTU. This would be the protocol MTU, not the interface MTU. I have sampling. We'll talk about that in another video. Simple filter. And look at the top, address. So I can do address, set address, and the really cool thing about Juniper is let's say we want to do 192.168.10.1 slash 24 bit. Isn't that totally cool? So if we do show, look at that. There's our IP address. Let me go up to, I'm going to go up to, so now we're just under the interface. If I do show the interface, Look at that. I have a live a description. Fast Ether 1 for the physical interface. MTU is 1500. Unit 0 is a logical unit. Under that, I have IP turned on. And under that, I have an IP address. That's pretty cool, right? Now, from here, I can still set the same options. I can do set unit 0, family INET, address. Let's add another one. Let's add 172.16. 0 0.1 slash 12. It's a big address space. Look at that. That's pretty much the entire uh, RFC uh, private v private uh, range for a Class B network. So let's take a look now. Look at that. I have two IPs. That's pretty cool, right? You can't really. You can do that on Cisco. You can use the secondary command. But let's go back and add another one. 32.123.42.2 slash 24. Let's add that one. Okay, I have three. Now, and on Juniper, you can just keep going. One IP after another after another. You can have 40 IP addresses on this interface if you want. Now, we have all these IPs, but let's say I want to I want to I want to do a you know an an IP address. That's going to be the primary IP address for that interface. This is the IP address I want the router to respond to packets as. So the, the source IP for the packets of this interface that the router originated will be this IP. So let's say I want to make it the 172 IP. So I can do set address. Let's do set unit 0 family inet address and let's say I want to do the 172 and then I want to also make that primary address so now if I do a show look at that that one is primary it's all by itself which means that if you ping that interface it is going to respond as the 172 address by default by default okay so now we have this config let's say let's say you know what let's say I made a mistake I made a typo I don't really want all those IPs on the interface well we can delete unit 0 family inet 
address. Uh, which address is it? Question mark. I can see all the addresses. Let's say I want to get rid of the 172 address, which is also the primary one. And let's say, you know what, I also want to get rid of the 32.123.43.2 address. I don't like that one very much either. And let's do a show. Oh, they're all gone. So now I actually have IP connectivity on this interface. And I want to go up to the top now. So now we can view the whole config in its context. So you can see that underneath syslog we have interfaces I have an IP address on that interface so we can go ahead and commit this now let's do a check configuration check succeeds let's do a commit now that configuration is committed so let's let's uh, exit out of configuration mode and let's do a show route remember before we didn't get a full routing table this is what we were missing before inet0 so now we have a full a real routing table that's actually usable because we have an IP address assigned on an interface. So that's usable. So let's say now I've got my interface turned on, which is totally cool. Let's do a show. Let's do a show interfaces terse again. You know what? That's a lot of stuff. I really don't want to see all that. Let's do show interfaces terse and let's go and pipe that. Let's match on INET. Look at that, just the IP, just the interfaces that have IPs assigned are matched. Now look at that, that interface is down. So let's see if we can do something about that. I'm going to plug it into the network, and we're going to see that interface come up in just a second here. It would help if I get the right cable. Ah, look at that, the interface is up, right? So now if we go back to show route, now it's up. You see the difference in the routing table? Now the route is actually active because a, if you go up to the top before, what did the route say? One active, but it didn't really have, the route was rejected because the interface was down. Now I have two active, zero rejected, but it's ready to go. So we're good here. Now let, let's say... 192.168.10.0, let's say that's our DSL uh, IP and there's a DSL modem in front of it. And I need to set a default route to the internet. So let's go back to edit. And we're going to go back and we're going to do edit routing options. That's a little bit different from Cisco. We show here there's nothing here. Let's do set, see what we can do. Typo. Now if we do a set here, you'll see that we have a bunch of options here crazy 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 amount of options you can see here it's got rib groups which is multiple routing tables you can really see the lineage here from an ISP based core router let's do source routing though that's what we're after or not source sorry not source routing static routing that's really what we're after we need a static route to the internet so we're gonna set a static route destination 0, .0, .0, .0, 0, .0, 0, 0 slash 0 that's our all everything route and we're going to need to do next hop. Now you see there's a lot of options here. There's next hop, next table, a bunch of stuff. So there's a lot of options to do really interesting, cool stuff with routing. Next hop. Now we want to make our next hop. Let's scroll up here. What was our interface IP? 192.168.10.1. We're going to make it 192.168.10.254. So if you do a show, We've got static options inside the routing options. If I go back up to top and do a show, you'll see that in the routing options section, there's our static route. Now let's see if that actually updated. Let's commit and quit. So it's going to commit our configuration change. Now we're back out. Let's do a show route again. Look at that. There's our static route. It's up. So we are operational now so that's how you add a static route and that's pretty cool and if we decided that we didn't want to commit the static route we could also do something about that as well uh, we could remove it there's a lot of options we could do uh, and you know that's the really neat thing about Juniper is, is that everything is clean at first it looks hard let's do a show configuration here it looks different but when you look at it Everything's in its own little place, services, syslog, interfaces.